So for the entire history of this channel, or at least for the vast majority of it, I was a window manager guy. I've made hundreds of videos about window managers of varying types, be it reviews, or tutorials, all that stuff. And I enjoy window managers. I've talked about window managers, like I said, a lot on the channel. I've talked about them on the podcast. I enjoy that workflow more than any other. But about five or six months ago, I decided that I was going to give desktop environments a good old college try. Now, I have use desktop environments many times over the course of my Linux, you know, career, and they're fine, but usually I end up going back to a window manager, whatever window manager I'm preferring at the time, that's usually what I go back to fairly soon. I've done long-term long reviews of desktop environments during that time where I, you know, talk about that desktop environment for a little bit in a video, but I always go back to a window manager because I'm a window manager guy. But I wanted to use desktop environments for a long period of time to see if I could actually get myself into that workflow and be happy with it without tiling. Now, I say without tiling because I'm, if I'm just going to make the desktop environments that I'm using into tiling window managers, then there's not really a point there. At least, I don't think so. So... Over the course of the last six months, I've used the two primary desktop environments of our world, GNOME and KDE. And I've used them fairly equally. I used GNOME for about two and a half months, and then since then I've used KDE. And I have some thoughts. Now, this is not a GNOME or KDE review. I've made those videos already, and you can check them out on my channel by subscribing and leaving a thumbs up. But... What I want to talk about today is instead the desktop environment workflow and how it kind of differs and how much I like it or dislike it being a window manager guy because I still do consider myself someone who enjoys window managers more than I like the desktop environment. And I think that even despite having spent six months in this workflow, I think that that's still true. So that's a spoiler, I suppose. But let's talk instead about how I'm feeling with this workflow. So if we take a look at my desktop, actually, we can just go ahead and do this. I'm in KDE currently and have been for several months. And overall, the thing that you'll notice is that I have windows open and most of them are on my secondary monitor. Those are the ones that are always stationary. Those things usually don't change or they're ones that I'm not act actively interacting with all the time. And then I have things like my terminal that's usually here or my browser, which is here, right? So uh, this is the main monitor where I do the stuff. The other monitor tends to be where I pile windows in a, well, a pile. And that workflow at the beginning drove me bonkers so i have you know right now i have what, like six or seven windows open and the vast majority of them are piled on my other monitor in no particular order and if i want to get to one of those i either have to go to the bar and you know if i wanted to get to discord i'd click this one if i wanted to you know go to a different one i'd have to press that one or i'd have to alt tab in order to cycle through the tabs like like so and you know it, it's fine but it took a long, long, long time to get used to. And even now, I don't like it. Like, it, it still feels so disorganized to me that oftentimes I find myself closing windows. Now, <laughs> I know that sounded weird to say. Because it did sound, it was weird to say. Most people... They don't really have a problem closing windows. That's what you're supposed to do with a window. When you're done with it, you close it. It's like a door. You walk through it, you close the door after yourself. That's the way that it's supposed to be, right? And, and in real life, that's the way it works. But for me, I, as with tabs, as with workspaces, I like to have things open, right? Even if I'm not using it actively, like my file manager right now, I haven't used it in a little while. But it's always open. Like, I could close it, and sometimes I do, but I also like to always have it just there, right? That's one of the, one of the reasons why, when I was on a window manager, I always had a workspace that was dedicated for 
the file manager that I was using at the time. It was always on that file manager or always on that workspace. It never closed. H half the times I had it open up on launch on that workspace. Here, I still have it open all the time, but it's just part of the pile. You know what I mean? It's just part of the pile of stuff and it feels very disorganized. Now, I've talked about this before and you guys know that I'm a big proponent of workspaces. So if I go to another workspace here, if I go to two, oh, look at that. There's a GIMP window there that I didn't even remember was there. That right there is a new thing on a brand new t-shirt that I just put up in the shop. Shop.thelinuxcast.org. Shop.thelinuxcast.org. But this kind of proves my point. That's been there for a couple days. <laughs> like I created that like two days ago and I forgot to close GIMP. Didn't realize that it was there. I can actually close that. Uh, and the thing is, I just don't use workspaces. I don't use workspaces at all. Very, very rarely do I use workspaces. I have four of them. Like if I go to, this is number four. And uh, yeah, there's nothing there. And, um, you know, I just don't use them. Despite being a workspace guy, using a desktop environment, be it GNOME or KDE, I just don't use the workspaces. Now, part of that is the stupid, idiotic, moronic, dumbass way workspaces work on a desktop environment. They're all tied together if you have multiple monitors, and it's the stupidest thing you've ever heard. There's no way that that's the way that they should work, and it just boggles the mind. And it's not a KDE problem because GNOME does it too. For whatever reason, you, ch you change the workspace on this monitor, it changes it on both monitors or on all your monitors. And what if I wanted the thing that's on this alternative monitor to stay there? Well, I could pin it to all the workspaces, but that's stupid. I don't want it on all the workspaces. I just want to have that workspace stay stationary or at least only change when I want it to change on that monitor and not on both monitors. It's the stupidest thing ever. I hate it with a passion. It's not the way workspaces should work and they need to fix it. Like, end rant, but still the stupidest thing. So, <laughs> I didn't really mean to rant so hard there, but it was necessary. So, I don't use workspaces when I'm in a desktop environment. Part of it, the reason why is because of that stupid way, but also because I've just gotten used to, and I hate the fact that it's true, I've gotten used to just having all of my windows on one workspace in a gigantic pile. Uh, either minimized and not a pile, but still there when they're open. Uh, or I close them like a normal person, which is still not something that I usually do. So uh, I have this pile of windows. They're all on one, one workspace. And it just not, it's not, it's not as soothing or rewarding, I don't think, as it was when I was on the window manager. It doesn't feel like I'm as organized as I once was. And that hurts my organized soul just a bit. Now, the funny thing is, is I'm a digitally organized person. In real life... I don't organize shit. <laughs> like, I, am, I, I don't do a good job of, like, I don't organize my clothes by color or any of that stuff. Like, I, I, like that's not the type of organization kind of person I am. My cable situation is a bucket of cables. None of them are tied together. It's just one gigantic Clark Griswold style bundle of stuff. And so, in real life, don't organize stuff, but digitally, I organize everything. Everything's in its own directory and stuff. Every, everything's supposed to be on its own workspace, all that stuff, right? As a desktop environment user, though, that organization has pulled back a little bit, and it bugs me more than uh, I'm, I'm comfortable admitting. And it's just one of those things. That it's just it's constantly there. Now, I've gotten used to that lack of organization, but, you know, I, I just, I don't think that it's something that I'd be comfortable with longer term than I need to be. And that's, I mean, that's just the, the, the kick of it, right? Another thing is, is that I prefer full screen windows. Now, you can have full screen windows in a, in a desktop environment, obviously. That's easy enough. And you can even make it so that everything does appear full screen. Like if, if I were to close this and then reopen up my terminal, it would stay full screen. Like it, it, now if I make it small again, then close it again and then open it, it remembers the size it was when it was closed, which is great. But I oftentimes, you know, have it like this. And the fact that then I would close it and reopen it, it would be exactly the same. 
I like the full screen aspect of most of my windows, and it doesn't always do that, which means that I always have to things. And and the weird thing about window managers is that they manage it for you. When you're in a desktop environment, you are in charge of managing your windows, and that responsibility is something that I'm not really all that interested in. I want it to be much more automatic than it actually is. And it's the same same thing between switching between different clients and stuff like that. It's it's much more of a it's like a manual tiler in that in, in that regard where you are one hundred percent in control of where your windows are all the time, how they spawn, what size they are, and, and in a in a tiling window manager, you never see yourself doing this. You know what I mean? That's really, that's not something that you I would pretty much ever do in a tiling window manager because they're either full screen or they're tiled or whatever and you know there's key bindings and that's another thing like i know it's a little bit of rambling but when it comes to key bindings i don't use key bindings nearly as much because that's just not the way this workflow works it's more of a mouse oriented workflow whereas in a window manager you use your keyboard more that took a lot of getting used to for me because for years i've been using my keyboard to do Basically everything. If I want to go to a, a, a Wick workspace, I use the keyboard. If I want to spawn the terminal, I use the keyboard, which I can still do. But you guys saw me do it here just a minute ago. I didn't go to my keyboard. I went down here and clicked the icon. Now, is that easier? No, I, I think that it's probably half a one, you know, six of one, a dozen, half dozen of the other when it comes to which is easier. It's just which is more muscle memory. But you know, it was something that I had to get used to because I'm not used to having icons to click. I'm always used to having to either open up the, you know, launcher or whatever, or I would have to use the key binding. Now, there's icons to click, and there's a menu over here, which I, by the way, I never use the menu. Like, like I, I, it's down there only because it provides the ability to shut the computer down via a GUI. And I could probably find a different way of doing that, so I wouldn't even really need it. So, but if I need to go into the menu, I just use KRunner, right? And that's just the way that I do. I basically use that as my Rofi replacement, and it's a good Rofi replacement. It's not as uh, it's not as customized as I customized Rofi, but it basically allows me to search for files and websites and all sorts of stuff. So it's it's just as it, it, it's probably better than Rofi. So I like that aspect of it. But that, that you know, you know, so there are things in a desktop environment that I use that were never really available to me in a window manager, or at least not in the window managers that I was using. And it was a whole it's been a whole new experience. And it's taken a long long time for me to get used to not only all of the things that I just talked about but the design of it you guys may have noticed if you watched my channel for any amount of time but in the most recent months my ricing videos have disappeared now some of that was because i've been on color scheme challenges there i have a friend on discord his name is darth vader and it, we have been challenging each other to not switch color schemes as much as we used to we, we were both kind of that type of person who would switch multiple times a day and we tried to get away from that for the last eight or nine months or so and uh, we did that but now i'm you know i'm back to using Grovebox, which is my home sweet home. But the, the point is, is that what, what part of the reason why there hasn't been as many racing videos is because of that, but also in a desktop environment, racing isn't as fun. Like, like if, if I go to my settings application here, again, I press the button instead of using the keyboard shortcut, which I do have, and I even know what it is. If I go to the appearance settings, like I have all of these themes, I can switch to them if I want to. And yeah, that's cool, but it's all done for me. That that's that that's freaking boring, man. Uh, like it's not. It doesn't. All I'd have to all I have to do is you know I click on this, hit apply, and bam, I have a different thing. Like yeah, there's some things that I have to change, like the the theme in my browser or the theme in the terminal. But other than that, I, I just do that, and not I've raced something. Like that's that's I can't make a video out of that. Um, but even outside of the whole video thing, I. <laughs> that's not entertaining at all. So the whole racing thing was one of those things that I really, truly enjoyed about using Window Manager. It challenged me. It's how I learned a lot of C. It's how I learned a lot of Python. It's how I learned a lot of Lua. Uh, it's how I learned some Haskell and discovered that I hated Haskell. You know, like, like it's, it's, those were, a those were avenues towards me learning new things. 
this is just a button on a screen that I can choose to go to the color scheme that I want to, you know, uh, use. And, uh, like, it's okay, right? But it, it it's not as fun as it was uh, when I was using Window Manager. It's just, it's just not. So I have to go back to Breeze Dark here in order to get my color schemes the way that they need to be. So go here and then Color Schemes and then back down to Grubbox, wherever that was, down here. And then I can go back to where I was. So, um, yeah, it's all a bucket full of nonsense. It's really what it is. So I've talked about this in my patron exclusive podcast that I do for my patrons and my YouTube members, where I want to go back to a window manager now. Like, like I've spent my time in a desktop environment. I've made now made this video that I will be able to share with you guys talking about my experiences with a window with a desktop environment and all that stuff. I want to go back to a window manager, and I have. And I've tried it. And two things have happened. One, I've discovered that my current monitor setup is not conducive towards a window manager. I bought a LG Dual Up. And if you don't know what that is, you can Google it. It's the weirdest fucking monitor you've ever seen. It basically allows you to have two monitors in one. Or you can just use it as one gigantic, basically 41-inch diagonal monitor, which is what I do. At least the way I'm doing it now. I used to have it split into two 21-inch monitors. I guess it would be 42-inch diagonal, whatever. The point is, is that I have this really weird monitor. It's a really weird resolution, and it's not very good when it comes to being able to be controlled outside of its native resolution, especially when you're using it in single monitor mode because it's really a weird resolution. And that may, means basically it cuts off XORG completely because you usually when I'm in XORG, I can, if I want the thing to actually work, I have to make the resolution smaller. So when I was having it, this monitor as two separate monitors, I just made them 1080p and it worked fine. But now that it's one big monitor, there's no good smaller resolution that I can go to to make it actually, you know, readable for me because my eyes aren't great. Like I need to get my eyes checked. These, even wearing my glasses now, I can hardly, you know, read things. So, uh, Having it as its native resolution makes the tiny, tiny text, and I can't read it very good. Uh, so, X and XORG doesn't do scaling very well with multiple monitors. It will do it fine with one monitor, but if you have two and you don't want it to scale on one and you need it to scale on the other, that doesn't work very well at all. So, that kind of leaves me to a Wayland compositor or a Wayland window manager, and there aren't any good ones. At least there aren't any good ones for me. Now, I like Hyperland a lot, but for whatever reason, it hates my living guts. It wants to shoot me and uh, murder my family. It's that. It's just the bug. It's buggier than buggy can be. It's so buggy. I can't even... like. I, I tried it again the other day, and the mouse input was just off. It was really, really weird. It was, I, if, if, I clicked, if I clicked here, the mouse would register or click over here and like what that was it was a really weird thing and i don't know if that's i don't know if it's my hardware setup that it doesn't like or what it's really weird but hyperland continues to be buggy and that's like the only wayland window manager that's good that i like i don't care for sway i haven't tried many of the other ones but i probably should give them a try but my whole point in all this thing is like i want to go back to a window manager but due to my current setup in terms of monitors I'm having a hard time going back to one. But the second thing that also happened when I did get one to work, uh, and I did that by basically turning this monitor here into two separate monitors, going to 1080p and all that stuff, right? So I, I, I got that to work kind of. I, I had a hard time going back to the workflow. Like I had a hard time. Now I, could, I definitely could find myself back into it, but that initial shock of being back into having multiple different workspaces to manage, uh, transferring back from using a mouse all the time to using a keyboard all the time. It was a shock how different those workflows actually were, and I forgot how much of a muscle memory I had to have in order to do things in a window manager that I just ha had completely abandoned all of those things in a desktop environment. It took, it was a, it was a severe shock to the system and if I were to go back, if I w were able to find a window manager that wor would work my current monitor situation, it would take me a, a good couple of weeks, maybe even longer, to get back into that workflow and enjoy it. Like, I tried to, like, I'm the type of person who would go through and 
patch DWM for fun. Had no intention of using DWM, but I would patch DWM for fun because I wanted to try to see how many patches I could do manually. That's fun for me, or it used to be. I tried to do a video on it again and I realized I don't like that anymore. I don't like the level of work. And I think that the point I'm trying to make here out of all of this is that desktop environments have made me lazy. <laughs> lazier, lazier than I used to be. <laughs> okay. Like, like, desktop environments do everything for you. They manage your Bluetooth. They manage your microphone and your audio. And they manage your screen. And they manage your display resolution. They manage your theming. They manage your key bindings. They do all of this stuff for you and when you do have to intervene it's very easy to go into a GUI and make a little bit of changes and then go back to whatever it is you're doing whereas on a window manager you gotta delve into those configuration files boy and get that shit done and you have to know how to do that and if you don't know how to do it you have to go look it up and learn how to do it and it requires effort and I forgot that that required effort and I didn't like the effort that it required, right? It, 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 it was a really startling revelation to me that I, I got so, I, I was very, I become complacent about the amount of work that goes into managing my system because desktop environments basically manage all this stuff for you. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's probably the way that it should be. The desktop environment should just do things for you it should give you options to make things easier right that's the way that it should be but if you're a window manager guy like i still consider myself to be it feels weird right it feels weird to have gotten used to those conveniences and i don't know if it would be so easy to go back without them so i'm in a weird situation where i want to be a window manager guy but the desktop environment stuff is easy and appeals to my lazy side. And I've gotten used to that workflow and all that stuff in the monitor situation. So I've decided I'm staying on KDE for now. Now, eventually, I'm going to replace the double monitor setup that I have. I'm getting rid of the dual up setup, the, the LD dual up and the 1080p monitor that I have here. That, and I'll get something else. It's just one big monitor. It'll be so much easier to manage. But that's going to be who knows how long before I can save up to actually, you know, do that. So it's going to be a while. Until then, this is my setup. Some part of me is not all that happy about it because I want to go use a window manager. But also, I found myself very comfy in a desktop environment despite all of my odd complaints about it. So that was a guy sitting on YouTube for 20 minutes talking about about desktop environments if that's not a linux nerd i don't know what it is so if you like this type of linux nerdery linux nerdery linux nerddom we're going to come up with a word for that uh, you can leave a comment in the comment section below and uh, nerd out with me i really appreciate all the comments you guys leave so if you haven't left a comment leave a comment also leave a thumbs up it really helps the video i'd really really appreciate it if you left a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet hit the subscribe button because I make videos like this all the time. Me rambling in front of a camera for 20 minutes about utter nonsense. And if you like that kind of thing, you'll like the rest of my videos because that's basically all of them. So hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Now that I've gotten my YouTube stuff out of the way, now it's time to move on to the other stuff. So if you want to follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey, you can do so. Those links will be in the video description below. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also support me on Ko-fi and on YouTube. Those links will be, again, in the video description below. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. I, and the, the podcast wouldn't be carrying on and all this stuff. So thank you so very much for your support. If you support me on Patreon or Ko-fi or on YouTube, I truly, honestly do appreciate it. You, and I say at the end of every video, and I mean it with all my heart. So thank you so very much for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll see you next time.